So I know it's a video product, Jordan, but I'm going to host it today because Why? it's been your face for like a month and a half and everybody needs a break, okay? Check the comments. They're quite I, mean. I People are tired comments. of you. What? Where? No, no, I left a bunch of comments. They're really mean. You, nobody wants to see you anymore for a while, okay? Oh. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here. And if you're not shooting your videos on a gimbal, they're completely irrelevant, which is why Jordan is shooting an S1H today on a gimbal. And we're gonna be talking about the new DJI Pocket 2. This is an upgrade from the original Osmo Pocket and uh, we're gonna talk about what's different about it, compare the two side by side and see if it's really worth making the upgrade. I'm vlogging on stairs right now, which actually gives me a good opportunity to showcase one of the major improvements. We have a brand new lens on the Pocket 2. It's a 20 millimeter equivalent versus the 26 that you would find on the original Pocket. And if I push it away here, you can really see just how wide that is. Now this is really useful because it means I don't have to have my arm fully extended when I'm vlogging. I can show a lot more of the terrain around me. And uh, yeah, I just really like this new improvement. Plus the creative options of being able to push that perspective further away. Whew. Now that wider lens coverage is not the only thing that's gotten bigger and better about the Osmo series. The Pocket 2 also does have a brighter, wider aperture. It can go to 1.8 versus f2 on the original Pocket. I know that's not a huge deal, but when you couple that with a larger sensor as well in the Pocket 2, now we are seeing some improvements, especially low light. You know, we did a test here. When you look at the samples, the original Pocket still has a bit of that color noise, a lot of jumping stuff going on in darker areas. The Pocket 2 is smoothing that out quite a bit better but we're still retaining more detail, less noise reduction. And so overall, it is a marked improvement. Now we were also hoping that the larger sensor would improve dynamic range and be able to handle highlights and shadows on contrasty day like we have here today. We shot both cameras in the D cinema-like profile. I think it's the profile though that's limiting things because we didn't really notice much difference between the original camera and now the Pocket 2. However, the camera does still handle auto exposure really nice. You can see her transitioning from bright areas to dark areas. It has a fairly smooth and natural progression in the exposure. All right, we're gonna give Jordan a little bit of break uh, on the monitoring of the audio side. We're gonna use the built-in microphones on the Pocket 2. That's what you're hearing right now. Now, I do wanna mention first off that we always had an original Pocket and we liked it for B-roll, the stability was nice, but the built-in microphones were kind of crap and we never really used it very much. We didn't wanna record externally and sync it up. And although you could use a mic adapter, it just complicated the process. But now on the Pocket 2, we have a much nicer system. We've got microphones on both sides of the camera, left and right, as well as front facing and back facing. And that works great because if I point this away to Jordan, there he is, and I'm still talking, it still picks me up really nicely. And if you mention something, I'll allow it. Like uh, the commenter said I couldn't comment, so I'm just gonna smile at you. Yeah, so enough of Jordan. So what you can hear there is it's really nice that you get that audio no matter where you're looking. We are hiding from the wind right now, but you can, of course, like any other pocket, add on microphones if you do wanna record that separately. Now, if you were so inclined to shoot photos on the Pocket 2, we have a new feature here. Now, first off, these cameras have always been able to shoot RAW or JPEG. I don't know why you can't shoot RAW plus JPEG, whatever. But there is a neat feature here. The camera normally shoots 16 megapixel files, but it does have a sort of multi-shot, it's not really shifting the sensor, but shifting the whole unit on the gimbal, but it lets you compile extra photos together to get your megapixel count higher, like we've seen in a lot of our standard digital photo cameras. So you can go from 16 megapixels to 64 megapixels. Now slow-mo has always been a neat feature on the Pocket Osmo series of cameras, and now with the Pocket 2, we get 1080, 240 frame per second slow-mo as an option. Now, of course, it is gonna have lower quality. You can see the difference even from the 120 frame per second, it does get a little bit soft. There is a crop, although it's less than I thought it would be. And let's keep in mind that that 20 millimeter lens gives you lots of room to spare. So I like that. Now there are a couple issues here. First off, it records 240 frame per seconds, but it plays back at 30 frames per second. So if you're gonna import that into a timeline and let's say you're doing 24 frame per second, like we do, you'll just have to make those adjustments. Other issues, you can engage 120 or 240 in the Pocket 2 camera itself, but if you plug it into your phone and go through the Mimo app, for whatever reason, you're only able to do 120 frame per second through the app. 
I also want to talk about rolling shutter on the Pocket 2. Now, first off, it's great that we don't have a crop when we're shooting 4K 60. The sensor reads out fast enough for that. However, you will still see rolling shutter in our samples. I mean, you know, if you are in first person view and you go side to side, you'll see a bit of jiggle. Uh, when I go from myself to Jordan in our audio talk, you see it on the wall. If I was doing side pans or following somebody in a walk and talk going sideways, you would definitely see it there in the profile as well. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so first thing I want to mention, you can probably see it already on Jordan's footage, but the wind is blowing like crazy, my hair is going crazy, but we've got things propped up to forgive a little bit of shake in the camera, but this is a great way to test the active track mode. So I have to use the Mimo app with my phone. I draw a bounding box around my subject and it tracks it quite nicely. And this is great if you're a YouTuber all by yourself on the go trying to vlog. Hopefully you have a more stable setup, but I can move farther away, I can move closer in, right and left, and it just tracks me very, very nicely and unlike standard gimbals it will also autofocus as well so if you're vlogging on your own this is fantastic now we were only able to get our hands on the basic kit for the DJI Pocket 2, but it has this really nice option now. You can put extra attachments on the bottom. And the one that I really want to play with is the do-it-all handle kit. Now this is an external unit which clicks on the bottom, makes it a little bit longer, but you get a bigger battery built into there, 3.5 mil mic jack. It's got this cool wireless lav mic that comes with it, works wirelessly in the unit. And as well, it has an external speaker. That'd be really nice just to be able to check your audio afterwards. And it does have a tripod attachment as well. Very, very cool accessory. It's getting crazy windy here, guys. It's figuratively gonna blow Jordan and I away. So I think it's time to wrap it up. You know, my main takeaway from this is we played with the original Osmo Pocket and the fact that you've got manual control so that you can set smooth shutter speeds and, and get a more creative approach to videography and at the same time have the stability of a gimbal, which was always excellent on these units, really gave that camera a lot of potential. But the problem was, the, the smaller sensor, the fact the image quality never really competed with the smartphone, the poor audio, it just kept it from being a good vlogging camera or something that we'd ever want to use beyond just interesting gimbal motion for B-roll. But the Pocket 2 changes that. I mean, we've got better image quality. The low light performance is noticeably better. The wider angle lens is a huge improvement. I really did like the four microphones here. That also helped a lot. Add on the do-it-all kit and the fact that you can start to expand this. This is actually, I think, really showing where that potential could go. And so hopefully this video helps you guys decide if this camera is right for you and something that you might want to enjoy. Thanks so much, guys. Again, uh, subscribe, please. Again, I will change the way I say Nikon, so that's a big thing. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon.